1919, Mutiny and Riots in the Armed Forces. This is chapter 6 of our series of short stories. It's part of a sequence where we're explaining what happened and what was going across the desk of the British Prime Minister, David Lloyd George, in that 1918-1919 period, 1919 being when the race riots occurred. But those issues began in 1918, on the Royal Navy, when mutinies occurred from November 1918, when and the crew of a cruiser in Libau, Lithuania, refused to sail. Similarly, in the ports of Archangel and Mamensk, Navy crews were mutinying. In January 1919, the Admiralty warned the British government, the Prime Minister, that sailors were trying to form a trade union. The Royal Navy units, the Royal Navy ships who were moored around Russia and in Murmansk in 1918 and 1919, refused to sail, partly because they refused to go to war against the Bolsheviks. For the Navy, the war was over. On the 13th of January 1919, the Royal Navy gunboat, the HMS Kilbride, moored in Milford Haven, experienced and mutiny. The crew refused to obey orders and even took over the ship and flew the red flag instead of the Royal Navy ensign. January 19 also saw Royal Navy mutinies in Invergordon, Rosyth, Devonport and Portsmouth with crews refusing to weigh anchor and sail for action and the 645-ton gunboat, the HMS Sicala, when ordered to sail up the river Davina, exposing itself to Bolsheviks' guns on the banks of the river, they refused to go. The Admiral Cohen, Admiral Cohen asked the Admiralty if Britain was actually at war with the Bolsheviks, as war had not officially been declared, and was told yes. And he then arrested five men from the mutiny and sentenced to death. This was later commuted to five years in prison. The issues were threefold, and this was consistent across the, the armed forces. The men had had enough of war. They were generally volunteers or conscripts, and they wanted to return home. After all, their war had been against Germany. Russia versus the Bolsheviks, who had taken over predominantly most of Russia in the 1917 Civil War, the Navy, and later the Army, felt this was not their war. In fact, many respected the Bolshevik cause. But the real problem for government came when a, when soldier mutiny started. At the start, start of 19, there was a wave of soldier mutinies at Southwick, Folkestone, Dover, Osterley Park, Shortlands, Westham, Westerham Hill, Felixstowe, Grove Park, Shoreham, Bristol, Aldershot, Kempton Park, Southampton, Maidstone, Blackpool, Park Royal, Chatham, Fairlop, Biggin Hill, as well as several London railway stations where troops refused to embark trains for Russia and France. And troops already in Calais and Archangel formed Soviets and made links with local struggles. On the 3rd of January 1919, 12,000 12, soldiers blocked Folkestone Harbour and 2,000 marched in Dover to the town hall. They were refusing to be sent back to France or to Russia. The common story was they wanted to be demobilised. The war they signed up for was over. In London, 1,500 soldiers marched on 10 Downing Street, but unsurprisingly the Prime Minister David Lloyd George was out when they arrived. In 1919, there were more than 50 soldier mutinies and 100,000 soldiers were involved in those mutinies, or as some of them called them, strikes, but in the armed forces, refusing to work is a mutiny. More than anything, they wanted to go home and were tired of army discipline. They were conscripts, they were volunteers. This was not a professional army that we now see as normal. 
On the 23rd of January, over 5,000 soldiers arrived in Southampton docks, got off their ship to discover they were not going home. Instead, the rumour started they were going to Russia. They formed a soldiers' union and mutinied. The army sent General Hugh Trenchard to bring the situation to an end. This was an uncompromising man, former commander to the Royal Flying Corps and later to be in charge of London's Metropolitan Police. His task was to show all army conscripts mutiny would be dealt with in an uncompromising way. The mutineering soldiers wouldn't let him into the docks. He then brought in military police and 250 armed soldiers from Portsmouth who were lined up in front of the mutineers with fixed bayonets and ordered to cock rifles and instructed to fire on command. Trenchard was believed. All but a hundred mutineers gave in, and the hundred who did not were hosed down with ice-cold water from Southampton Harbour, and then arrested. In Calais, on the 26th of January, the men of the Army Ordnance and Mechanical Transport Corps refused to obey, to obey orders. They joined with French dock workers to bring the railways and shipping to a halt. Soldiers at Vendreur camp and women of the nursing corps in Dunkirk marched to Calais to join the now-created Soldiers' Council. 5,000 soldiers were waiting for ships to go back to Britain. They joined the strike, and soon the number was 30,000 Armed Forces members. General Sir Julian Bing was sent to stop the mutiny. Unfortunately, he arrived before the two divisions of soldiers who were supposed to accompany him. And when he met the soldiers, the strikers took his car and replaced the limousine with an army jeep. When the divisions arrived, many were young and inexperienced. They talked to the strikers and many changed sides. By now Bing had had enough, and with the soldiers he had available, he set up machine gun posts round the camp and ordered surrender or death. He arrested four ringleaders who he wanted to sentence to death, but Winston Churchill, Minister of War, could not remit risk martyrs, so they were imprisoned instead. Now, as I've said, that's over 50 mutinies, 100,000 soldiers, massive disruption, and even soldiers marching from Victoria Station, stationed with rifles at the slope, ready, down Whitehall. Churchill could see hundreds of them marching past his window, and he admitted later in a book that he was afraid. I remained in my room, a prey to anxiety. Yet, unlike West Indian soldiers who were to mutiny in Taranto in Italy because they were denied a wage increase because of their colour, no white soldier was shot for mutiny in 19.